It's Lachlan Meekin joining us from Go Markets. Lachlan, a very good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us. So, of course, um, hey, Andrew. the big macro news overnight was that latest uh, CPI read out of the States with inflation coming off slightly more than expected. That was certainly on the headline rate. It was more about the core inflation that, of course, the Fed follows. Uh, it's still sticky, though. Um, what did you see? What did you make of, of that reading? And, and I guess the, the reaction we saw on markets. Yeah, it was, it was a, a bit of a, a, a surprise reaction for such a, a reading that was so mildly less than expected. I mean, the headline figure, as you said, came in slightly less, but everything else is pretty much in line. But we did see in currency markets a, a real dip in the US dollar um, as, as rates markets repressed quite dovishly for what the Fed's going to do forward. Um, that quickly retraced, so we saw a, a real souring of uh, risk sentiment as, as the US session went on. And that that, uh, that drop in the US dollar was um, was retraced against all currencies except the except the yen, which was interesting. The dollar yen um, actually the yen benefited from that soft dollar, but uh, also continued to rally after that risk sentiment turn. So it kind of shows that the the yen is really the the safe haven currency of choice at the moment. But um, going forward, Andrew, I think I, I'm pretty bullish on the US dollar. I think there's a couple of reasons. Um, I think the debt ceiling uh, the, the negotiations, which were at impasse. Uh, so it's been a bit of a, a sideline at the moment, but I think that will come to the fore in the next few weeks. And it, it's it's not hard to see that um, it's going to take a bit of a market shock for the Democrats and Republicans to, to reach some common ground. And that kind of risk off sentiment, I think, will be certainly beneficial to the US dollar in the short term anyway, uh, and also the yen as well. Um, the other reason is I think that um, this real dovish repricing we saw last night of, of the Fed's hiking uh, schedule coming up. They've, they've they pretty much priced out completely a hike at the next meeting and then pricing in cuts like 80 basis points, I think, by the end of the year. So I think any surprises uh, to that will be to the hawkish side. I can't see any dovish surprises. It seems to be as dovishly priced in as possible. So that will also be dollar positive. So, yeah, I think for the rest of this quarter, we'll probably see the US dollar strength. But after that, um, we'll see. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, a number of factors at play there. Lachlan, you also talk about the debt ceiling, the ongoing negotiations there, whether it will be resolved. They got to the end of the month. I mean, if it comes to it and the US does default and it can't get that done by that date, I mean, that, that would be a huge hit to the US dollar, would it not? Uh, well, I don't think there'll be a default, mate. I think what will happen is there more than likely will be some real risk off, some uh, a, a big drop in the equity market. Um, this will have to get them to the table. But with that kind of risk off narrative, I think the dollar will it'll be dollar bullish. Mm. Um, sure, if, if if the nuclear option happens, they do, they do default, which I don't think anyone's going to let happen. Um, it, it's, it's bad for everything US, but I, I think they'll, they'll come to an agreement, but it's going to take a fair bit of push and shove and it's going to see take a bit of a market shock, I think, from to, to finally do that. And in the meantime, that that narrative of, of risk off um, is, is definitely bullish for the safe haven currency. So it's US dollar and the yen. Mm. All right. So common sense will prevail. I don't know that makes sense with politicians. But anyway, we'll see how it transpires. Eventually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, elsewhere, Lachlan, now, of course, tonight we do have the Bank of England, uh, the latest central bank to consider its uh, monetary policy. Yeah, I mean, they, they go to hike 25. That's that's a given. Um, the market's pricing at about 96% of that, I think, and, and more than likely the 7-2 vote split as well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised though, to see a dovish hike. I think the market's probably being a little bit aggressive with where the Bank of England's going. I know that the latest inflation and wage price uh, data was was pretty hot, but if you look under the bonnet of a bit, it was driven mostly by a couple of real volatile components there. So, um, And the narrative from the Bank of England too for the last couple of months is that their previous hikes haven't yet filtered through. So they've been pushing that line and and raising the bar it seems for um future hikes so i wouldn't be surprised if if yeah the the commentary that comes with they won't close the door to future hikes if data um dictates it but i, I wouldn't be surprised to see it come out as, as seen as dovish and and the pound sell off tonight i think that 126 level has been a a very major um resistance line uh it's it's the 12 months highs and it's it's really struggled to get above that so i think this time tomorrow we'll see a, a lower a lower cable all right, and Lachlan, uh, across the channel there, what are you seeing with the euro at the moment? Well, euro is another one, very similar to the pound, where it's pushed up from you know, these, these 
crazy lows it was at five, six months ago. And it's also struggling around that 12 month high, around that 111 point. Um, been a lot of hawkish ECB talking heads, which has failed to, kind of surprisingly to, to be able to push the euro past that. Um, I think there's that feeling with the pound, the euro, they've, they've gone a long way. You're starting to see um, some of the CFTC uh, specy reports that the, the longs in the euro are, are at extremes, which is, can be seen as a contrarian uh, indicator. Also, um, some notes from places like Deutsche Bank that are starting to sell cable. So I think there's that feeling that both these currencies have run out of steam at these levels. Um, I think the, I'm going to call a top in both of them around this, this height. I think that I'm pretty convinced we'll see some US dollar strength in the next couple of months. So a bit of a dip, whether they can revisit those levels, say in Q3, uh, or we'll see basically how the US goes. I'm checking the Aussie then. Uh, look, not really any movement we saw in relation to the budget. I guess that's not unexpected. But uh, is it for the Aussie, is it still all about the US dollar? Yeah, I mean, we've been in a very, very tight range, haven't we? 66 to 68. That 68 level has been um, a very difficult one for the get above. And we did spike above there last night on that CPI, but quickly retraced through. Um, we're getting mixed data out of China as well. We saw like CPI, PPI coming cooler today, and there was a real little dip in the Aussie on that as well. Um, I'd be more inclined to think it's going to go test the bottom of that range rather than get through 68. Uh, it's It just has a feeling that um, it, there's no real impetus to go through. We, we I think that that rally from the bottom of the range to the top in the last couple of weeks certainly helped by that surprise hike from the RBA, but um, whether we get another one of those is probably unlikely, but uh, who knows. But I, I think it's going to take something a little bit um, special to get it through that 68 level. It's, it's been held there since since February and had many attempts at it and just hasn't been able to get through.